Hey friends, what's going on? <laughs> Probably a lot since my last video, right? <laughs> but anyway, uh, here I am. Um, I want to share with you a quick technique uh, I used uh, on painting what would have been a failed 3D print, um, but I, I salvaged them. I applied this hairspray chipping technique to the prop, and that's what I want to share with you. I want to share with you um, the process of how to do that, and then also uh, a couple cool photos that I took using this prop to show you all the texture and stuff like that in the photos. Um, let me show you how they normally look when I print them and paint them and ship them. Um, they look like this, and I don't want to say what they are because in case AI is listening, they might think this is some weird video. But it's a prop like this. Uh, it usually has a little sheet on the bottom, and um, you know, they're all labeled and, 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 and uh, look like this. But the, you know, occasionally when you 3D print, sometimes things go less than ideal. And this particular set printed uh, with uh, some bad legs, so I just cut them off. I printed with two legs instead of three, so <laughs> nobody wants a two-legged prop, right? So I cut them off, and what I did was I decided to use a technique called hairspray chipping, and I wanted to make these look like they were uh, abandoned um, and kind of rediscovered sitting in a field, uh, and, you know, they had never really done their job. Um, they had never really, you know, kind of uh, did that. <laughs> and so um, I thought it would be a cool uh, technique to share with you uh, and look at all the texture and you know everything going on in this piece and there's two of them like this and um, and it's just a cool technique to save some 3d prints and it gave me an opportunity to you know share with you how I did this because there's a lot going on in these little pieces uh, and let's um, take a look at a couple photos that I used these props in, and then I'll go through the process of, of uh, you know, how we did all the painting and texturing and everything, um, and the hairspray chipping. Uh, I think you'll dig it. It's pretty cool. Anyway, let's get go with the video. <laughs> take a look at this uh, photo. And this tank that he's holding is also done using the hairspray chipping technique and what I'm going to show you. Uh, in this video how I did with this military prop but look at that sitting in the ground kind of you know being rediscovered there's a lot of texture going on underneath the, the paint uh, kind of bubbling through and there's lots of layers going on in this and here's another shot of the same uh, different figure but the same uh, prop that we're going to be uh, painting in this in this video. Um, that's a cool figure too. Chaos uh, Frontline, uh, the Ren figure. Really, really nice. But look, there it is sitting there in the dirt. She's sitting on it and uh, just chilling in the morning sun. <laughs> so let's take a look at how I did this. So firstly, you can see the prop sitting there. I just did a base coat of spray paint on them to the rust colored brown. And then I take that AK Terrain's product that I showed you and I'm just stippling that on. I dip my paintbrush in some water and then I dip it in the AK terrains and then I just go ahead and stipple it on in random spots. And the reason that I'm doing this is because I want to give the effect or I want to give the illusion um, or the, the, the sense that this paint is bubbling up from underneath with rust. Remember this prop has been sitting, you know, un used in a field um, there was a dud so there's a lots of texture and corrosion going on with this and and lots of age and you know kind of distress and so i want to give that idea so i'm starting from the very base layer of this prop after i rattle can rust brown this then i'll go ahead and add the texture from AK Terrains and we'll paint over the top of this later and you'll see how each layer kind of builds on each other. This is a really cool product. Um, corrosion texture. Uh, it does go a long way. You probably could make it yourself also for the DIY just with some pigments mixed into some stucco or some tile grout. Get you some hairspray. Cheap dollar two dollar hairspray uh, it doesn't matter the kind I don't think but it needs to be the aerosol um, and the trick here is once this is dried you're not going to just like spray a big blast of this hairspray on there uh, you want to lightly mist it on 
let it dry, lightly mist it on again, and repeat the process until you have the coverage that you're looking for. Um, because if you put it on in one big glob, then when you go to chip it using the water, it's going to come off in big, uncontrollable pieces and you might lose the effect that you're after. And so just lightly mist it on and build it up. We'll be in a hurry. It's all right. Take your time. <laughs> Let it dry. <laughs> Who knows what I'm doing with my hands here? I'm Sometimes what I do is I think to myself, well, I'm just going to do the audio while I do the video. Uh, and later when I go back through and I watched and I watched the video, I'm like, this, this audio is horrible. <laughs> so I go back through and I do the voiceover. But sometimes my hand signals <laughs> don't match. But anyway, uh, we're just building this up, man. Letting this dry get in the coverage that we want. And this dries pretty quick. It's, you know, it's got that alcohol in there and stuff. And so it dries pretty quick. I remember using this stuff as a kid, man. I'm not going to lie. We, you know, had the Aquanet and we had the Sun In and, and all those different hair products of the 80s. <laughs> I miss the 80s. It's a great time. Great music. But anyway, back uh, to the task at hand. Once this dries, I'm going to mix up some... Uh, airbrush paint and paint these a nice green color and I'm going to use the Vallejo these are the Vallejo model paints um, these aren't the Vallejo model air but I, I like these paints and I do have the model air also but I just reduce it down with a little bit of the Vallejo reducer you could probably reduce it down with just distilled water too I mean they're acrylic paints they're water based so it wouldn't be a big deal but uh, I just happen to have the airbrush thinner already there on hand so let's mix that up and get it a good consistency and we'll spray these rascals and you'll start to see these things you know change you know and and the process start to you know look really cool man uh and this is just a flat green that i put on here they look like cake pops huh with the stick in the bottom <laughs> but don't eat them at any rate, so yeah, you can see how painting over this texture, you know, is sometimes you see the rust and it's just rust on top of the paint or, uh, you know, sometimes you put the, the, the rust on over the paint and you leave the rust like unpainted so that it shows brown and orange and stuff like that. That's one way to do it. But I wanted this to have the green on top uh but with the texture of the rust so that it would be like bubble bubbling looking. And, and so in order to do that, you know, you, you, you start from the very bottom and, and build it up and paint over the top of the texture. Now here, once that dries, all I'm going to do is you see me dip my brush. That's just a bowl of regular water. The trick here is get you a short bristle brush. Um, you can cut it so that it's, shorter and it's a little more firm and you really really want to take your time here remember the acrylic paint is water-based and then the hairspray is water-based so if i'm brushing those things with water they're going to disappear and reveal the spray paint underneath which is not water-based so it's really durable so i don't have to worry about rubbing that away with water um so you just dip the brush like you see I'm doing here and, and I'm just going through in random spots where I think I want that spray paint to show through uh, and giving it little twists and little turns you know and going in just a pattern that I think that that, that I like I'm just kind of subconsciously letting myself go and have fun with this piece and you know let my hands create something really cool here and disconnect from my mind a bit <laughs> story of my life <laughs> disconnect from my mind but you know uh it's really easy to get carried away with this and it's really easy to put too much water on that brush and get a section of you know bad result on here that's why i have the paper towel there you'll see me i'll occasionally dip my brush on the paper towel just to get some of the excess water see i did it right there just to get some of the excess water off uh because we just don't 
if you get a, a streak of water on there and it drips down the side of the the model that you're working on, then you really run the risk of wherever that water drip flowed, you're going to erase you know, paint behind it. And so it's going to look poor. So take your time, use a moist brush, not a, not a sop and wet brush. Once you're done with that, I'm going to spray this with a Mod Podge. And the reason is, is because this is all water-based paint on the surface. I need to protect that. So, uh, in order to do that, I just spray it with the Mod Podge aerosol. You could do a brush on also, but honestly, the brush on Mod Podge for this, I, I wouldn't be a fan of it because it's uh, thick and it goes on with brush strokes and it, it doesn't give the, you know, the, the, the look that I want. The aerosol really goes on quick and it dries fast, you know. So here we're just doing some black washing. Uh, you could do a brown wash. You could do whatever color wash you want. But this is the reason that I Mod Podged it is because we're going to be adding more water on top of water-based products. And I don't want to wash those away. So uh, we, we protect it with a finish of Mod Podge. And then we just, you know, we get this black, uh, black wash on there. And you see me brush the whole the whole prop in water and then I just kind of lightly dab it away with the microfiber towel. I want to leave some spots on there. I want to take some spots off and it's all just a matter of, of what looks good to you as you're doing this. Then I go ahead and hit it with the heat gun just to speed up the dry time. Look at that. Man, we're looking pretty cool. From a failed, it wasn't a failed 3D print, but you know, well, it was failed. If it wasn't right, it was, it failed. <laughs> so we're just repurposing this into something else because honestly, these are, uh, you know, about an eight hour print time and to have a couple of them print with only two legs, which is sort of a weird anomaly because I print this file all the time and it was just really weird. There was no resin in the, you know, there was no failed, you know, part of the print in the vat. And so, uh, it just was some weird anomaly that it didn't print. And sometimes th weird things like that tend to happen <laughs> when you're 3D printing, it's weird. But uh, at any rate, so we're gonna go ahead and continue to wash these. And you can see the effect that this is all, all these little steps have had uh, up to this point on painting these. Now I wanna get some good uh, black wash down inside that little ring. There's like a recess there that I modeled into this little prop and I wanna make sure we get some, some of that black wash down inside there. But these are looking so cool, man. And you can always use this type of prop in, in photography. You know, just dab it off. We don't want to take it all off. And the pattern of the microfiber towel really leaves some areas on there that are nice. And it, and, and uh, you just kind of stipple with it like you would a sponge. And it just creates some really cool patterns and textures on there that make a cool black wash and, and add to the overall appearance of the, of the prop. Want to avoid any standing spots like that one right there I didn't see. So we dab that back off. You don't really want, well, I, I don't want, you might want, but I didn't want any standing spots that look like it was, you know, wash water. Uh, so we'll just stipple and rub that away until I get a, a look that I like. And get over here. It's trying to roll away on me. It's a fighter. <laughs> Phileo pigments. I love these things. Uh, I do have a video on taking your chalk pastels, putting them in a neutral bullet and creating your own pigments. That's a cool video. And I do that often. Uh, I just happen to go with the, the Vallejos here with a little Vallejo uh, airbrush thinner. Then we stipple these pigments on in areas that we think we want to have some new colored bright colored rust to go against the darker underlying um, color of the brown spray paint. Uh, so, you know, contrasting colors, darks and lights, we'll stipple this on with a sponge and create some really cool patterns with this, uh, pat uh, with this uh, pigments here. It doesn't take much and you can just stipple it on and don't, and you know, one thing that's cool about these these pigments is you can build them up and create their own 
layers of texture that you can feel and see. They're not just washed on. Uh, they're actually caked on and built up and then Mod Podged over. Look at that. So that you retain all this real texture, not just like a, a, a fake washed on, stippled on, you know, painted on texture. This is actually real texture. Uh, so when you go to photograph these, you get all these cool bits of detail. And if you use clarity or texture in your Lightroom uh, post-processing, you can really have some awesome textures begin to pop out in your photos when you use products that create real texture as opposed to just painted on texture. Sometimes painted on texture is the way to go. You might be doing a floor or whatever, and you want to just paint the texture on using washes uh, and and give the illusion that there's some texture and, and age there but then you can do it like this too and you can just really build up the product into actual textures and that photograph's so nice and I have a few different this Vallejo set of rust pigments uh, it comes in, a, in with, a, with a few colors in there and uh, and one thing that got me to creating my own pigments, uh, or, you know, in the Nutribullet using the soft chalk pastels was that sometimes these Vallejo products, you just can't get them. They're just so far back ordered that, you know, you have to come up with some alternatives. And I saw a video one time on somebody had ground up some chalk pastels and man, it worked, it worked great. And so you can certainly do that. I'm just going through and fine tuning here with a smaller little piece of sponge and different texture sponge. It's good to have different textures of sponge on hand uh, from a grout sponge, which has a lot of little tiny, super tiny holes in it to a more, uh, you know, larger poured sponge. There's, if you ever look at sponges, you know, they're, they're all a bit different in their, in their texture. So once that's done, we're going to once again, spray this with Mod Podge and protect everything that we just did. Look at this. <laughs> We're out here in the field, man. She's sitting on this thing. Look at that. Doesn't that look cool? Look at all that texture. <laughs> anyway, just a reminder, if you haven't done so, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate you watching. And uh, you can follow me on all the social media platforms. You can buy 3D printed props from me on my website, Etsy, Facebook, and Instagram stores also. But um, thanks for watching again. I know it's been a minute, but I hope you enjoyed this video and some behind the scenes. Take care.